Hey, hey, welcome everybody. It's Timmy here with Chalk Couture. It is a beautiful spring night. Zoe says hello to you as well today. It is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous here in Connecticut. I hope where you are, it is also equally as lovely. So really happy to be here with you tonight. Notice prompt eight o'clock. I am like trying to stay on task with my eight o'clock live so that you know when it is I am going live and sharing new projects with you. So if you are catching me, please come on in, say hi, and I can start to tell you about what we're gonna do today. So 4th of July, I know, it just, I know, it's only June 6th, but 4th of July is gonna be a huge deal in my house. And why is it gonna be a huge deal? Well, my son from Texas is coming home and I'm very excited. Hey, Cheryl, do you celebrate July 4th? I just think that's one of the most fun summer holidays. We get the cornhole out and we get a big tent set up. Yes, and Zoe gets to bark at all of our guests. And uh, it's just fun to get everyone together, have a big bonfire, right? Just awesome summer memories and fireflies are out it's totally one of my favorite things so um, I'm really excited in particular about oh I just saw a fox run through the backyard outside my window I'm like what is that it was a fox I'm glad my dog is inside hmm, keep your dogs inside there's foxes running around the neighborhood um, but I am super excited about July 4th this year uh, in particular because last year my son uh, who uh, serves me, serves our country very proudly in the Army, was uh, deployed overseas. And uh, he was actually, it was part of the reason why it is that I have uh, gotten myself into this incredible adventure that I've been having with Chaka Tour. I needed a little distraction, you might say, from uh, the worrying mom syndrome that I had going on. So, uh, so excited about, um, kind of learning about Chaka Tour at that time of my life and now just having so much fun getting to share um, some great projects ideas with you and really helping women to increase their confidence in their uh, creativity and in other areas of their life too. It's been a really incredible opportunity and uh, I'm super excited to be here and to share this great holiday themed sign with you today. So Cheryl, I know that when you um, responded to my poll about whether or not we should do a sign or we should do a pillow, you voted for the pillows because you haven't seen me do inks. And um, unfortunately, I should have looked before I got all carried away with my pole, but I am actually out of my lumbar pillowcases and the transfer we're using definitely needed a big pillowcase. So I will be sure to, if I don't go live doing it, I will definitely do up a video so that you can see it and I'll post it on my page. So yeah, Cheryl, I am really, 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 really excited to see him. He, well, the last time I saw him was at Christmas, so it wasn't that long ago, but I'll be ready. Yeah, twice a year. It's kind of a big change from, you know, when they lived with you all the time. You know, so it's tough. So big picnics. What is your favorite July 4th picnic food? I always like to know what other people are doing when they do their holiday celebration. So if you have a fun one that you love, I would love to know about it. And uh, we should get into doing our project so you know what's happening here, right? So let me just change our view. So there you go. Now I'm in the corner here. Oh, baby's in the corner again. And this is it. This is our home spun flag transfer. This is the one that um, is really kind of rusticy. If you look a really closely, you can kind of see that these bars are not uh, perfectly filled in, which means it's going to uh, kind of give that really kind of rusticy flair, which I really love. That whole vintage vibe is totally me. If you're a vintage lover, I tell me, put a number one in the comments. I want to know if you're a vintage lover or if you like more uh, modern feel. Um, but since I love the vintage feel, I'm really glad that I have this board for us to use tonight. And I think my picture's in the way. Am I in the way? Maybe if I come down here, let's see. If I'm in the way, you just tell me and I'll move my, my little picture there in the corner. 
um, this is a big board and a big transfer so it's um, going to take up a little space. Cheryl, I want to see a picture of your big flag cake. If you have a picture, I'd love it if you posted it because I have a feeling if you've made one before, you still have one around a picture maybe. Love to see it. I always love getting inspiration from other people. Um, and I love cake. So, and it's a flag cake. So that might be really fun to be able to have on hand for when Chris comes home. Ah, big vintage. Ah, I'm with you. I'm totally with you. I love hunting for vintage treasures and kind of, uh, kind of roughing things up a little to make them look vintage when they're not. Uh, I have so much fun with all that stuff. So uh, it's, I'm glad I'm in. Um, good company here with you, Cheryl. I know this board really is, it's, it's a lot of fun. So this is one of our wood box frames. And one of the decisions we're gonna have to make tonight is if we are going to chalk on this side, on the white side, or if we're gonna flip it over and use kind of this darker espresso side. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. The difference really will be that when we use this transfer, if we use the dark side, then we'll use both pieces of this transfer. If we do it on the white side, we'll only need to actually use one piece of it because um, the white stripes will be the back of the board. So as I am getting ready to grab my scissors here and get our transfer open and get it ready for use. Think about that for me, would ya? Let me know if you think we should use the white side or if we should use the darker side. Now the picture I posted of Rita, uh, if you saw that earlier today, who made this um, sign when she came to my class last week, used the back side. So I'm almost tempted to use the front side, the white side, just so that we can have a comparison, but um, you'll have to let me know. All right. So remember, um, when you have a transfer and you see this little white line here, that indicates it's a cut line. Um, so we're going to cut this transfer right along that cut line. And you don't have to be perfect, perfect. The green area is actually um, is the kind of adhesive part of the transfer on the back side. It's not the actual screen. So it doesn't have to be perfect, which is good because I'm not really good at being perfect. Oh, so Cheryl, you like the dark. I know I do too. And it really does give me a chance to illustrate how you use both pieces. So maybe we could do the front side and then also do the back side. But let's start with the back side. I think that's a great idea. So I'm gonna flip this over. Doesn't matter where or what side, there's no holders at this point, so we don't have to worry about that. And if you look really closely, um, there are little what we call registration marks on these transfers. And they are so that it can help you to line up just perfectly. Um, in this project today, since we're using the wood board, I am not going to pay attention to these registration marks. And that's because um, I don't want to leave those registration marks on the wood and they will definitely, um, they will definitely show. So we don't wanna do that. Um, so one thing of course I need out is my fuzzing cloth. I've been using my fuzzing cloth around paint here so you'll see it's a little filled with chalk paint. <laughs> Elaine, the dark side, that is so funny. Oh, Cheryl, so I am doing a fundraiser benefit, benefiting on um, the Asbury Methodist Church, and uh, anybody is welcome, um, public can go, and we are doing a um, project using our board and base surface, and I am bringing a whole slew of different, um, of the smaller A size transfers that you're gonna be able to pick from when you go. So the fee is um, just $30 and $10 of that fee is going right to Asbury Methodist for their fundraiser. So yeah, if you'd like to come, it'd be great to have you. I'd love to see you in person. That would be so fun. <laughs> Elaine, I'm just loving, loving the postings of your gorgeous flowers in your yard. Very, very cool to see everything all in bloom there in Terryville. Lovely, lovely, lovely. 
Now, you know what I'm doing here, I'm fuzzing. And the reason we fuzz really is just so that when um, we go to put this transfer down onto our surface, that we don't pull uh, the transfer and uh, stretch it. This is, as you know, a silkscreen transfer and it is fabric, so that means it definitely can be pulled. We don't wanna do that. So we just wanna kinda of loosen the adhesive a little bit so that when we go to pull this transfer up, it will come up nice and easily and we won't stretch this screen. Now, this is a very big screened area, um, meaning that you wanna make sure that you get all the bubbles out and hands definitely work for this, it's fine. Let the adhesive on the back do its trick. Definitely see some bubbles there, so I think I'm gonna grab a little squeegee here and, oops, a little stirrer stick here and just make sure that I have a good non-bubble event going on. There's one still up here that's just being a little tricky. So I'm gonna try it one more time here. There. Yep, that looks better. And then same thing here. So make sure there's no air bubbles. So we're gonna use our Liberty Blue, of course. That makes total sense. Um, Cheryl, I think it starts at Seven, if I'm not mistaken, but you should definitely find it in the events area on my page. Um, if you can't, I can send you a note too when we're done and I can look it up for you. Um, I understand we're gonna have a really nice crowd, so that will be fun. So we're gonna use the Liberty Blue, so that will give us the blue ba background of our flag. And then we are going to red, white, right. So I think we'll do this in red. And then once we lift this up and it dries, then we'll put down our second layer and that will make our white stars and our white stripes. So that's it. It's gonna be super fun and really quick. Um, the big thing really is the drying time. So I do have a little a heat tool here in case we wanna hurry things up. So here we go. We've got our three ounce chalk paste container. As I said, this is our Liberty Blue. Notice when I open it, it it's some, um, a little separated that's very normal no worries about that just give it a nice stir this Liberty Blue consistency is just lovely some of our chalk paste depending on the pigment uh, are a little different in terms of their consistency but this Liberty Blue is just delightful it's so perfect so you usually want your chalk paste to be the consistency of like yogurt or sour cream so if you open it and it's a little thick, just give it um, a little squirt of water, give it a stir and all, you'll be all set. So I'm also gonna open up the red so that we are ready to use that. And then I do have a big water bath here on the side of me that you can't see. Um, I actually have a, one of those big aluminum pans and that works really well for me to be able to put my transfers into soak so that I can go and wash them when we're done here. Um, so that's it, we've got our two colors open. We can open our white in a little bit. We're not in any hurry about that. And as I said, really, it's just these areas, the screened areas that we need to worry about covering. So I think I'm gonna take the bigger squeegee here to do the blue. And then because I don't need to cover a big, big, big area here, I think I'm just gonna use a partial squeegee to be able to put on the chalk paste here for the red stripes. So I'm just kind of illustrating how it is you're using the squeegee. So this is um, actually a cut uh, squeegee. I cut it in half. Um, it was one of our older ones that actually were a different shape than our newer ones, which are longer. Um, and they fit right in the jar really nicely. Um, but this is a nice size, especially for this particular 
stripe. It's going to be perfect. Now just beware, you don't want to get any chalk paste on the outsides of this area. You don't want to put it anywhere where you don't want it because this is a wood surface and although our chalk pastes aren't permanent per se, when you put them on a chalkboard, they go on wet, they dry hard, and then of course you can wash them off with water and reuse your chalkboard surface. But these um, box frames are more of a one-time use surface. So um, you don't want to kind of get chalk paste where you don't want it if you can help it, okay? So let's start with this beautiful Liberty Blue. Just love this blue, it's so gorgeous. And then we're just putting a little bit on our squeegee. And then we're just gonna draw the chalk paste over the surface of the screen really easy and it's okay if you go a little heavy to start we can squeegee off the excess after we have finished the um, red or we can use what we call the chalk and pull method and that is um, a great method to do when you've got a big space like this and you want to make sure that this doesn't dry on the screen before you finish the next part of the design. So if it would be helpful, I'll be happy to illustrate that so that you can see how that chalk and pull works. So we're just squeegeeing off all the excess, putting that excess right back in the jar to use again for another day. And there we go. I think we've got most of it off. Just make sure that you kind of look and make sure you don't have any lines because those lines will come through a little bit. So we want to make sure that those are not visible. And we won't need this blue again, so actually I could just close this up, throw that in my water bath. And while that's all it takes to, water, to clean up all this stuff. You all know that, though. Just a little bit of water. And then I'm going to grab my little tool here because you know I'm still working on my nails and really Elaine tell me about this deodorant on your nails what does that do does it prevent you from biting because it's gross tasting or is it more about helping them to grow I'm really curious I need to know Elaine all right so see there you go so this is what we call the chalk and pull method so what I'm doing is I am pulling this up so that the chalk paste is on the board and doesn't dry on the transfer. And then I can just lay this right back down over it. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's just the screen's gonna lay it right back down. No worries, no biggie. And now I can focus on getting the red down on these stripes. Just still making sure that there isn't any air bubbles. These little uh, lines sometimes can be a little tricky. Now, let me tell you something. I'm quite sad, not sad, I'm excited and sad at the same time. But what I'm sad about is this is one of the uh, transfers that's retiring at the end of the month. So why are they retiring? Well, because July 1st marks the start of our new season catalog. And uh, in order to make room for all the good stuff, some of the old stuff needs to go. Now, I know this isn't super old. It hasn't been out all that long. But, um, you know, being a seasonal transfer, it doesn't stay in forever. So if you like this transfer, you need to go grab it because it is going to be gone. And uh, there is no guarantee that you will ever be able to get it again. I know that sounds really drastic, but... Um, so many people I know fall in love with a transfer and they, they think, oh, I can get it any time, and, and then it's gone. So uh, there are a whole slew of transfers that are going out of stock between July and August. Um, and I did put a post up on my page to tell you about those all. But if you have any questions about what they look like, you can definitely go on uh, my website and do a search for them and they will pull up so you can see pictures of them or I can send them to you as well. So you just let me know if there was something there that uh, piqued your curiosity and you wanna know about it. Because um, there are some really awesome ones that are on their way out. And this is one of them. So if you love this guy, you gotta go grab it on my website before it disappears. All right, so that's it. 
Um, I am going to just go over this once really quickly here with a little bigger squeegee just to hurry some things along, make sure that I got all the excess off. And honestly, I wouldn't mind so much if it dried a little bit on the surface only because I think it would really enhance the rustic look of it a bit. But um, so don't fret if it dries a little bit before you're done. But it didn't, look at that. Super, super gorgeous, love it already. Now just wait till we add the white and see that really pop, right? All right, so Elaine, I see your comment here. Yes, it keeps you from biting them, okay. That I get. I was hoping that you were gonna tell me that it was something that would um, actually help to get my nails uh, to grow a little faster. So I don't know if you all been following me uh, this week, but I have started to read an awesome book um, called The Five Second Rule. It's by a woman named Mel Robbins. And um, it's a very interesting um, process that you go through in your mind um, about this five second rule. And what she talks about is that when you are faced with uh, doing something that you don't want to do, that if you hesitate, your brain kicks in and gives you all sorts of reasons why you shouldn't do it. Um, and you can interrupt that process flow by counting down five, four, three, two, one, and then take action, whatever that action is. So anyway, long story short, you know if you've been watching my lives that I've been talking about trying to figure out a way to how to stop biting my nails. And I started using the five second rule. So whenever I think I'm getting nervous or I start to recognize that I'm putting my hands near my mouth, I do the five, four, three, two, one, and I move. Just, you know, sit on my hands or I don't know, do something, right? So anyway, it's working. I don't know, it's totally working. So now what I recognize is, now that I really have stopped biting them, I need a little shaping, I need a little help with, um, getting them to look better, my cuticles are a mess. So anyway, that's why I was asking all about that today. I think I might have started to break the habit of the biting piece, just not sure that I have totally broken the habit. But um, I think if I start to really, really take good care of them, that they will be better. A lot of people were telling me about gel, so I have to take a peek at that. I did do gel nails for a while. I did have one period in my life, I don't know, what it is or why I had that period, but I was like for two years, I stopped biting my nails. It was the first time ever in my entire life. And I loved it, loved having nails. I loved going to have them done, made me feel really nice and pretty. It's funny how these little things, right, make you feel good about yourself. Anyway, um, so I am so ready to get back there. So when I saw that picture and posted it and said, this is what my nails, I want my nails to look like, I was totally serious. It's exactly what I want them to look like. So if you have gorgeous nails, I am envious, but I'm going to get there, I promise, one day. All right, so um, just kind of taking a really quick look here. Notice that you can definitely see that there's some vintage-y look. That's exactly the way it's supposed to. Um, ah, your nails break, yeah, and working in, yes. I would imagine that's true. I know you have a beautiful garden as well. Cheryl and Elaine, you would probably love to talk to each other about your uh, gardening adventures. I don't know, Cheryl, if I told you, but this weekend I am headed uh, to go for a hike. Elaine, I know hiking and camping is also right up your alley, too. If you're wondering what it is I'm doing right here, this is uh, just a heat gun. And it's kind of like a little mini blow dryer, but it works a little bit more quickly. And it'll kind of force this to dry a little bit more quickly. If you don't have one of these at home, it's no big deal, you don't need one. I just like to use it when we're going live here so that we can kind of move on to our next layer without having to wait too long. And you can actually start to see when this is drying because it starts to change colors. It kind of gets like a matte color. Now we'll give that a minute or two to dry and um, for the heat to go away. And I will tell you that um, the other thing that was really awesome that came in the mail today, you wanna see, is this. Now, if you've been watching me, you know what this is. 
This is our monthly club couture transfer that just got sent to me in the mail. And I can tell you that there are some awesome things in here that would work really great with this board. Cheryl, you could absolutely use a hairdryer. Um, absolutely. The heat tool just actually works a little bit faster, so that's why, again, when I am on the live, it's just a little bit easier, and it's not quite as loud <laughs> as, a, as a, hair dry, a hair dryer is. So um, these are used like for embossing tools, so if you've done card making and that kind of stuff, you might uh, have seen one. And they're really inexpensive, so I like that too. Um, so this is pretty close to being dry. I'm just gonna rub it here and test out some areas. Feels pretty good to me. Now I have to say, one of the other things I really like to do um, is, as I said, kind of rough it up. And so if you have a little sanding block, you know, if you really wanted to give this an even more rustic feel, the sanding block would work really well. Um, all right, so now that that's dry, I can go ahead and cover it up and we can get ready to fuzz our second layer. And you saw how fast this went. This just does not take very long at all to put this together. You know me, I'm just a chatty Kathy. And I love that you're all talking to me, so thanks so much. You know, we are, I am so fortunate. I am getting super, super close to 500 likes on my business page. I think we're less than 10 likes away. So I would really love it if you can help me get there. If um, you would take a minute and just share this with someone that you think might enjoy it, I would totally appreciate it. Um, when we hit 500 likes, I have some awesome goodies that I will be uh, giving away to those of you that are, have liked my page. Um, and for those that share, you'll get a little extra bonus. So um, if we can get to 500 likes, when we get to 500 likes, we are absolutely going to give away some goodies. So feel free to share my page, feel free to share my videos, um, and uh, invite people, your friends, if you think they would enjoy this, to watch along with you. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're just going to lay this right here over where it goes. Let's see if I put it in the right place. Now I'm using the stars to be able to line this up because as I told you, I did not use these little registration marks. And this one's gonna be really easy because we are just using white. These are gonna be the white stripes and then of course the white stars on the blue background. So this one's a pretty easy one, I think, in of being able to line up. And just gonna rub it down again, just make sure that there's no air bubbles. And I do find that when um, we do put the chalk paste on that it'll be a little bit easier if um, we go in one direction. That way we'll be sure not to have any air bubble damage. You don't want any air bubble damage, right? And so what I'll just do is dab a few dabs of white from our white chalk paste. And then I'm gonna use this big four inch handled squeegee because it is totally one of my faves and it's really easy to, uh, as I just said, I was gonna go, you know what? It is totally one of my faves, but you know what? It's not working because I wanna go in one direction. So I'm gonna put this aside. Oh, Cheryl, thanks for the share. That is much appreciated. Awesome. I got Miss Zoe here wandering around my feet. I think she's trying to figure out if there's any good watermelon around. She is a watermelon enthusiast. Now, Elaine, I know you have dogs. Cheryl, do you have dogs as well? My dog, I've never seen a dog love watermelon as much as Zoe does. She's a little Cocker Spaniel, and she can pretty much ignore all other foods, but when the watermelon comes out, she is out and about. See, now what I just did, I put a little bit of, little. I got a little white glob there. Did you notice? Um, not a big deal. We'll just take a little eraser and try to get that off but I'm not gonna sweat it because it's not that important as I said I like to rough it up a little so if it's not totally perfect that is right up my alley all right and then we're just pulling up the excess same thing here with our stars and we're ready to lift this up look at that already look at how gorgeous that star those stripes are it's just so easy and so fun. 
here comes the stars. How did we do? Ah, perfection. Look at that. Oh, I'm glad to know that it's not just my dog. Who knew? I never knew dogs really were that big of fans of watermelon. Now, by the way, when you put your transfers in water, put them sticky side down and that will help them not stick to the other things that are in your water bath. That's it, folks. Wasn't that so easy? Oh, blue tick coon hound. My dog loves everything. That's so funny. My little Zoe has had lots of um, issues, let's just say, and she's on special diet food and uh, all of that. And so we have to be really cautious about what it is we allow her to eat. Um, there was a time in which she would absolutely eat anything and everything we put in front of her. So, um, so we, have, we have this little spot right here. So I think if we take a little bit of our board eraser, which I don't know if I have one handy. Oh, I do right here. I'm going to grab one. I could probably wet that just a tad and fix that little blob there that I don't rub too hard because if you rub too hard, we will take off some of the finish of the board, but just enough to be able to give that a little. Yeah, see, the finish came off pretty easily. So keep it, keep that in mind when you play around with that. But that's it. Super, super, super easy, right? Um, let me just get myself here out of the picture so we can really see it all finished. And this will just take another minute or two, as you know, to dry and it'll be ready to go. Hey, Shell! Welcome, it's so nice to see you. I know you've been so busy, girl. Um, so as I was saying, before we got interrupted here and I was finishing up, the new Club Couture design came. And I know if you watched me before, you know all about Club Couture. I won't open it yet because that's gonna be my Monday live, but uh, totally gonna look really great with this board. So this board's gonna come back on Monday and we're gonna add some extra bling to it for what's inside here. If you're curious about what's inside here and you can't wait, you can go visit my website and uh, just click on the Club Couture because if you do, you will uh, see that uh, transfer uh, that's in the package this month that you can order if you want. And also just going to, oh, rah, you lost me, I lost me. Let's try that again. Here we are, okay. Um, let's put me, you don't want it. Yeah, we're done with this project, right? Um, if you uh, want to join my uh, special group of style innovators, that's where you can find me if you're not already there. Um, Yes, a small heart would be really great, but you wait to see what's going to be in this little package, Elaine, on Monday, because I think we're going to be able to spiff that up no problem. Super, super fun with what's in this little package. So, um, yeah, I know actually now is it's, um, I can get out a little, um, probably darker pen and we could probably clean that up too if we wanted. Um, what um, my friend Rita did when she was here was she actually used that board eraser and made all of the areas of her board look rustic. So it was kind of like she almost made it look intentional. So like I said, we could do that and we could definitely use some um, sandpaper if we wanted to kind of rough it up a little too. So all those are good things. So be sure to check out my Style Innovators page. Of course, also, um, Oh my goodness, I had so many things on this page all at once. I got to get rid of them. Ah, there we go. Get rid of that. Oh, I can't get rid of it. It won't go away. Isn't that funny? Anyway, so that's it. That's our project uh, for tonight. I hope you enjoyed. It was great talking to you all. Cheryl, oh, I totally get the whole um, sick dog. It's so hard. I know. Elaine, isn't they, aren't they incredibly crisp? It's one of the things that amazes me. And of course, you know. Um, you've been here, you've had a chance to use some of these products for yourself. They're super fun. So if any of these are things that you would like to be able to own, you can go right to my website. Um, later on, I will go ahead and um, put up a notice. Um, Cheryl, this board is actually a board that we sell. Um, so you can get it right on my Chalk Couture site, which is that one that you're seeing right at the bottom. 
Um, and I can put up links for those too, so that uh, if you want to find them, you can go ahead and do that. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful night. It was great to have you here. And uh, it's Thursday, so Friday is right around the corner. So enjoy, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Enjoy your family, enjoy the warm weather we're supposed to have here in Connecticut. And I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks, bye.